What is up guys, Andy Forrest, Steam Runner here, and today I'm giving you guys my first impressions of the Hoka One One Rocket X. And there we go, 10 miles complete in the Hoka One One Rocket X. Today I'm going to be going through with you guys my first impressions of this awesome carbon plated racing shoe and with all first impressions we'll of course go through all the technical details of this shoe. If you're new to the channel though make sure you stick around hit that subscribe button because not only do we do first impressions we do speed tests, long run tests and of course after 100 mile reviews just to give you a good picture as to how the shoe has held up. Talk about its pros, cons, and all of that stuff. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, give it a like, share it with your friends, do all that good stuff, and we'll start with the tech. So let's start by saying this shoe has a 30 millimeter stack height in the heel, 25 millimeter stack height in the forefoot, meaning we have a heel to toe drop of five millimeters. In this shoe, I did indeed go true to size as always. With Hoka though, just for clarification, when they get up to sizes 12 and above, it goes 12 and a half, 13 and a half, 14 and a half, so on and so forth. And so I, as a standard UK size 13, have to go 13 and a half. And as always with all Hoka shoes, it fits true to size. For me, in my size, as I said, UK 13 and a half, 276 grams or 9.7 ounces. And as always, with all our first impressions, we'll work our way from the heel counter area, moving down through the tongue lacing system, cover the upper midsole carbon plate in there, the early stage meta rocker, all of that stuff, and then of course the outsole rubber. So we'll start with the heel counter area, a relatively surprisingly for a racing shoe plush heel counter area. Seen lots of shoes this year that have very flimsy areas around here just literally to shave off weight. Now this thing as racers go in my size is a little bit heavier than some of the others but for me I'm quite happy to exchange a little bit of weight for a bit more comfort. Now don't forget the Carbon X which this isn't the predecessor, uh, this isn't the superseder of the Carbon X, this is obviously a different model. We've got the Carbon X2 coming I think early next year from Hoka but it's a similar design, similar model. I have to say these shoes are geared up for the longer distance so you are going to want a little bit of comfort in there and this thing for me delivered really really nicely. We've got that bumper edge padding up and around the heel counter area but then of course when we get down towards the base of this material it's very very light and flimsy but we've got the padding up around here so it sits lovely just under the ankle bone and for me around the Achilles area and we do indeed have a little bit of structure in fact a lot of structure this heel counter area just does not flex which for me I liked a lot. Moving on to the tongue, a relatively thin tongue, as you can see in the overlay B-roll. We have a thin tongue which is indeed gusseted, which means it is connected from the side wall of the shoe on the medial and lateral side over the top to give your midfoot that nice secure feeling. And we have a traditional lacing system down the top of the shoe, very simple, very straightforward. One of the gripes I did have with this shoe, we'll come back to, is with the laces, so just bear that in mind. We have a super breathable upper, lovely, lovely upper, fitted really well. For those of you wanting to reference to other shoes, I am of course running in the Rincon at the moment. That shoe is relatively narrow. I did find this shoe to be slightly wider than the Rincon, which is great because my foot just about fits in the Rincon. It's a relatively, I have a quite a wide foot. And this one is a bit wider again, which is good. So I got a nice, had lots of room in the toe box, put it that way, which was good for me. And as you can see, we've got these perforated holes all around this kind of mesh material with a honeycomb pattern there that you can literally, if I look through it, see daylight through. We've got a little bit of extra layering here around the toe and of course around the heel counter area where uh, there's a bit more reinforcements. But other than that, 
super lightweight and breathable mesh. I think better than the Carbon X, if I'm honest with you. Moving on to the midsole, we have an EVA midsole that the uh, Rocket X is using. Certainly not the same midsole that we saw in the Carbon X. This is a lot softer. For those of you who ran in the Carbon X and have followed the channel for a while, you know I love my Carbon X. Great shoe, but relatively firm. This is softer. Just as smooth as a Carbon X, but softer, which will please a lot of you. Definitely a shoe if you're looking for a more softer material in the midsole, it's worth a look at. Dual density, so two different types in here. And I believe, I think, I haven't researched this, so this is just a guess from what I can see. But as you can see here, this line there, following that along there, I think that's where the carbon plate is sitting. I might be very, very wrong, but from where I can see, that's where the two layers of the EVA are sandwiched together. And I'm going to assume that the plate is sandwiched in there somewhere. But of course, if you know exactly where it is, comment below and correct me if I'm wrong. And then we've got some strategically placed rubber outsole here to um, basically deliver a little bit of traction, a little bit of grip. But unlike the Carbon X, we had where this dual density, uh, the second layer of EVA foam is here. On the Carbon X, it was a thick slab of rubber way too heavy this thing is not utilizing that nice and soft foam and then we've just got some overlay rubber here which is perfect amount nothing too stupid not too much of it just absolutely ideal amount so for me this is an absolutely great shoe from the technical side So moving on to the juicy details, the first impressions, how did I find the Rocket X on its maiden outing? Well, 10 miles were done and I absolutely loved it. We did a warm up, we did 20 by 200 meters, we did a 15 minute tempo run and we did a cool down. And there was not one point in that workout where I did not enjoy this shoe. Unlike other races, this shoe felt good moving through the paces. I'm not saying it's an easy day shoe because quite frankly, it's not and it's a lot of money for an easy day shoe, but it didn't feel awkward in those warm up or cool down areas, which is good. Some shoes, maybe like the Endorphin Pro, for example, can feel a little bit mm, clunky or a little bit aggressive because the carbon plate is a bit more prominent in that shoe compared to this thing. The carbon plate in here, for me, just like the Carbon X, is so much more subtle. And where this thing shines is the early stage Meta Rocker just like the Carbon X, such a smooth transition through the gait cycle. I mean, this is possibly the smoothest shoe I have run in this year. As I said, it just brings back such good memories of running in the Carbon X. It really, I'm gonna try not to refer back to that too much, but it really is like a refined version of the Carbon X. They've taken the bad stuff out of the Carbon X, like the weight, they've reduced the weight a bit in this thing, for me, especially in my size, got rid of that big slab of rubber, made it a better upper material for me, a bit more room in the toe box, and bang, I've got a shoe that I really, really like. And what also I love about it is it's 140 pounds for a carbon plated racer. This is the cheapest, I think it's the cheapest carbon plated racer, 100 pounds cheaper than the next percent. I guess the question is gonna be for a lot of you guys, does it compete with the next percent? I think I'm gonna answer that question in another video, but the general consensus is the next percent is next level, and then you have all of the other carbon plated races. So I guess the real question is where does this sit in amongst the rest? Is it the best of the rest? We'll do a video on that at some point when I've done some more testing in it. We've got a long run to do first, which will be this weekend, which I'm super, super excited about. A couple of things, a couple of points to note. As I said, the laces, I mentioned it in the technical, very stretchy laces. They did come undone, they did come loose. I did have to re-tighten them, and I did find that the lockdown over the top did loosen as I was running, not horrifically, but there's a little bit of give in the laces. And so you just got to bear that in mind. I think on the second time when I did the map, I just over tightened them to give them a little bit of room to then loosen up a bit. And then I got the perfect feel with this shoe. And I think the only other thing to bear in mind is with the plate, as I said, for me, it's a pro. For some of you guys, it might be a con. You don't feel the plate. It's not like the Endorphin Pro or the Next Percent where you feel it and you get that real pop sensation. You just don't get it in this shoe. I don't find or didn't find I got the pop, but what I did find is that smoothness. I have not run smoother in a session. I don't think this year, it's a bold statement, but I don't think I've run smoother in a session than I have in this Hoka One One Rocket X. It's definitely one for the future. For me personally, I think what Hoka need to do is look at what they've done with the Rocket X and build on it now. 
and they've got the foundations here for an absolutely cracking, cracking shoe. And hopefully with some more refinements, maybe a little bit of a better midsole, potentially. This is better than the Carbon X, but maybe it needs to go that next level to then really get it up competing with the next percent. Shed a little bit more weight. I would be prepared if needs be to lose some of this padding around here because for a racer, it is excessive. I liked it because it was comfy, but for a racer, if you want that ultimate A game shoe, this is probably B game shoe because of this little bit extra weight here. You could really shed a bit there and it would be an absolute dynamite. I can't wait to do more testing in it. Of course, a long run test this weekend. As far as a speed test goes, I've kind of done that. I'll recap that in the long run video. But to be honest with you, I think we're off to an absolute banging start with this shoe. So let me know in the comments below if you managed to get your hands on this thing. For me personally, already I'm envisaging using this thing for long runs, tempo runs, anything that is going to be smooth this thing will deliver on it's not an easy day shoe but everything else steady miles and all of that stuff this is going to be absolutely ideal for and let's put this into perspective here 140 pounds for this and the new balance fuel cell tc is 180 i'm going to be honest with you 40 pounds cheaper I know which one I would choose uh, already just from one run. Now that's not knocking the TC, I absolutely love that shoe, but if you're looking for something a bit more on a budget, which 140 pounds isn't cheap, but a bit more on a budget, do not look any further than the Rocket X. So what I'll do if you guys are interested, leave some links in the description below. You can go and pick up if you're in the UK, some of these from sportsshoes.com. There's not many sizes left, but if you're interested after that, then of course it's an affiliate link. It would indeed help support the channel if you're interested in the shoe. Make sure you click that link and uh, grab your pair today. And let me know if you already have your pair. What do you think of the Rocket X? How much testing have you done? How many miles have you got in it? And uh, are you as excited as I am to put more miles in it? Or has it been a little bit flat for you since you bought it? Let me know and let's get that discussion going. So that's it for today, guys. Make sure you give it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content. And as always, I'll see you on the next one. Until then.